is for a shop host mas machine that uses the token bucket algorithm for congestion control the token bucket has a capacity of 1 megabyte and the maximum output rate is 20 megabytes per second tokens arrive at a rate to sustain output at a rate of 10 megabytes per second and the token bucket is currently full and the machine needs to send 12 MB of data. The minimum time required to transmit the data is how many seconds that we have to find out. So the major thing that you have to see in this question is that it is a token bucket algorithm. Now what is a token bucket algorithm? A token bucket algorithm basically works by sending packets only in the presence of tokens. So basically we have a bucket of tokens and if we have a packet that is ready to be sent on the network then only if there is an available, available token in the token bucket then the packet is sent out on the network otherwise the packet waits or after, a, after some time the packet may also be discarded. So token bucket ensures that as long as the bucket is full and tokens are going out of the token bucket, these tokens are given to the packets and they can be sent to the network. Otherwise, the packets have to wait for the gen token to be generated. Okay. So now it is given to us that the input here it is given to us that tokens arrive at a rate of 10 megabytes per second. So the input rate of tokens or in token arrival rate is equal to 10 MB per second. Now what does that mean? That in one second 10 MB of tokens arrive. So in how many seconds 1 MB of tokens would arrive? 1 MB of tokens would take 1 by 10 which is equal to 0 0.10 seconds. Okay. Also it is given to us that the tokens move out of the bucket or they are they flow out of the bucket at a rate of 20 MB per second. Now 20 MBs in 1 second means how many how many seconds would be taken to move out 1 MB of tokens? It takes 1 by 20 seconds which is equal to 0 0.05 seconds. So when I say that 1 MB of tokens move out, I also mean that simultaneously these tokens are getting attached to information packets or data packets and 1 MB of data is moving on the network. So if I have to send 1 MB of data and I have 1 MB of tokens with me, that would only require 0 0.10 seconds. Okay. If, uh, yes. So uh, now I am given that the input, the token bucket is being filled at 0 0.10 seconds and the bucket is being emptied at 0 0.05 seconds. Now, if I start, uh, if I have to send 12 MB of data and I start at time equal to 0. So I know since the bucket is initially full, the capacity of the token bucket is 1 megabyte and the bucket is currently full. So at time 0, how much tokens I have? I have 1 MB of token so I can send 1 MB of tokens out. So at time equal to z if I consider 0 0.05 second interval. So at time equal to 0 0.05 seconds. How much data can be moved out? 1 MB of mo data can be moved out. And in this 0 0.05 seconds, how much data will be moved in? 0 0.5 MB of data will be moved in because 1 MB of data moves out in 0 0.05 seconds and 1 MB of data moves in in 0 0.1 second. So in 0 0.05 second, half a MB, that means half of this quantity of data will move in, okay? Or tokens will move inside the bucket and simultaneously the data will move or the packets will move. So initially at time zero, I was having 1 MB of data 1 MB of tokens and a total of 12 MB of data to send out 
at time t equal to 0.05 seconds i have sent out 1 mb of data okay and now i am left with 11 mbs of data now my bucket has 0.5 mb of data okay 1 mb moved out which was initially present 0.5 mb moved in now at time equal to 0.1 second or another interval of 0.05 what happens in this second interval in this interval i have the initial 0.5 mb that was present here the bucket had 0.5 mb plus in another 0.5 mb half mb of data would come in and since in 0.05 seconds 1 mb data moves out so 1 mb also moves out so combined quantity of 1 and 1 cancel out and the bucket has no data left or no tokens left okay so in 0.1 seconds we have transmitted out 1 plus 1 2 mbs of data 1 mb transmitted 1 mb data moved here and in the next 0.5 0.5 seconds another mb of data is moved out so a total of 2 mbs have been sent and we have to send out 10 mbs more now let's consider another interval of 0.05 seconds since the bucket has nothing now in after 0.10 and another 0.05 seconds what happens half mb data comes in and 1 mb can move out but since we do not have 1 mb what comes in is the only amount that moves out you can move a maximum of 1 mb out but now you got you are only having 0.5 mbs so you can move 0.5 mb out okay again the bucket has nothing so in this duration how much amount of data is moved out 0.5 mb is moved out again in the next 0. 0.5 second interval that means at time 0.2 seconds the same thing happens 0.5 mb data moves in 0.5 mb data moves out and again here we have transmitted 0.5 mb data so 1 plus 1 is 2 which was transmitted in the first 0.1 second and the last 1 mb or the next 1 mb is transmitted in the second 0.1 second so this would continue as long as 12 mb of data is finished so we can say that for 0 0.1 the first 0.1 second was utilized to send 2 mb of data and the remaining 10 mb of data would be sent in sorry the remaining 10 mb of data would be sent in uh 0.1 into 10 now how did i come here in every 0.1 second 1 mb of data is being transmitted and i am left with 10 mb of data so 0.1 into 10 is 1.0 seconds so this total comes out to be 1.1 seconds so this much time would be required to send a total of 1 12 mb of data out this was a little confusing question but you have to understood how the tokens are coming in and correspondingly the data is moving out initially since the bucket is full you have 1 mb of data and so in the first 0.1 seconds you can send out 2 mbs but from that point the bucket becomes empty then in every 0.1 second you can send out 1 mb of data only okay so 0.1 seconds into the remaining 10 mbs that you have to send out will give you a total of 1 second so 1 second would be required to send out the remaining 
10 MB and 0.1 second was required to send out the initial 2 MB. So this makes a total of 1.1 seconds. Now coming to the second question. The second question states that which one of the following protocols is not used to resolve one form of addresses to another one. Now these are different types of protocols which deal with addresses. DNS is domain name system or domain name server you can say domain name system and this protocol is used to resolve or convert I should say convert domain names to IP addresses okay you must not confuse that domain name is actually not an address okay but actually domain name is used to represent a resource that is present on the internet and it is an alias or you can say alias of the IP address or the address of a resource so don't consider that domain name is written in words and not in uh, digits so it is not an address it is a kind of address and DNS is used to resolve one form of address to another so DNS is not the right answer ARP is address resolution protocol address resolution protocol is used to convert or resolve an IP address to a MAC address address resolution protocol that resolves an IP to a MAC or a machine address or a physical address now dynamic host configuration protocol assigns IP dynamically okay it assigns IP addresses dynamically so it is not doing major conversion but one of the main functions of DHCP or dynamic host control protocol is dynamic assignment of IP addresses okay and RARP is reverse address resolution protocol which does the mapping from MAC address to an IP address so RARP, ARP and DNS are resolving one form of address to another but DHCP is not so option C is the correct pick the first question states that Consider a 128 cross 10 raised to power 3 bits per second satellite communication link with one way propagation delay of 150 milliseconds. So you can always start underlining the main values that are given to you. Selective transmission protocol or selective repeat protocol is used on this link to send data with a frame size of 1 KB. Neglect the transmission time of the acknowledgement the minimum number of bits that are required for a sequence number field to achieve 100% utilization is okay so initially you must know two things firstly is the round trip time and secondly the transmission time of a frame okay now transmission time of a frame is the frame size divided by the transmission speed so if I find out the transmission time of a frame it is given to be 1 KB divided by 128 into 10 raised to power 3 and this value would come out in seconds so to convert it into milliseconds I multiply it with by 10 raised to power 3 divided by 128 into 10 raised to power 3 both these value would cancel out now since the speed is given in bits but the size is in kilobytes because it is capital B so you have to multiply by 8 I am converting it into bits 1000 that is kilo bits multiplied by 120 sorry divided by 128 milliseconds and this would approximately come out to be 62.5 milliseconds okay now the second thing you need to calculate is the round trip time RTT the RTT is twice the propagation time 
okay the propagation time in one direction or the propagation delay that is given to you as 150 milliseconds that since it is given in milliseconds that was the reason i converted this value to milliseconds okay so 2 into 150 gives you 300 milliseconds now since you know that the maximum amount of time that a sender can transmit is equal to the round trip time plus the transmission time of a frame that means as long as the sender is transmitting a frame and the frame reaches the receiver and the acknowledgement comes back the sender can continue to transmit more frames without stopping so the maximum since we need 100% utilization that is why we have to find out the maximum amount of time that a sender can transmit a frames that a sender can transmit more frames is round trip time which is equal to RTT plus the transmission time which is I am writing as TT okay this value is equal to round trip time is coming out to be 300 plus 62.5 that we calculated which is equal to 362.5 millisecond now for this much duration a sender can transmit to achieve 100% utilization but the we have to find the maximum number of frames that can be transmitted so the number of frames or the maximum number of frames that can be transmitted frames that can be transmitted in this duration would be this time that means the total time divided by the transmission time of a single frame so the total time that we have to transmit divided by the transmission time that is required to send one frame okay time for one frame now this value is 362.5 divided by 62.5 so it approximately would come out to be six frames all right now in selective repeat you must remember that the sender window size ws is equal to wr okay in selective repeat therefore the total number of distinct sequence number that would be required would be twice of 6 that means 12 all right so distinct sequence numbers required would be is equal to 2 into 6 which comes out to be 12 these are the different sequence number required but you do not have to tell the number of sequence numbers you have to tell the number of bits required since 12 different numbers can be represented in 4 bits although there would be some patterns that would be left unused because a total of 4 bits gives you 16 combination but we can use 4 bits to represent 12 different patterns and that is why the answer to this question is 4. 4 bits would be required to achieve 100% utilization. Alright, now coming to the second question. In an Ethernet, Ethernet local area network, which of the following statements is true? First statement is a station stops to sense the channel once it starts transmitting a frame now this is not right because a station does not have to stop to listen to the channel or to sense the channel it does not need to stop its transmission so this is not true coming to the second point the purpose of jamming signal is to pad the frames that are smaller than the minimum frame size this is again incorrect because a jamming signal does not have this purpose the purpose of a jamming signal is in the uh, that whenever a collision is detected a jamming signal is sent 
सो दैट एवरी अदर एवरी अदर स्टेशन नो अबाउट द कोलिजन एंड द चैनल डज नो मोर ट्रांसमिशन अकर इन दैट चैनल ओके फॉर दैट पर्पज सो अ जैमिंग सिग्नल इज सेंट आउट वेन अ कोलिजन इज डिटेक्टेड सो दिस इज अगेन रॉन्ग ऑप्शन बी इज अगेन नॉट द राइट ऑप्शन वी हैव टू टेल विच इज द राइट ऑप्शन और विच इज द ट्रू स्टेटमेंट C option states that a station continues to transmit the packet even after collision is detected. No, once a collision is detected, the station no longer transmits the frame or the packet that it is currently transmitting. Now all three options are incorrect, so definitely last option has to be correct. But still, we'll find out the exponential bind back of algorithm or mechanism. reduces the probability of collision on retransmission yes this is correct exponential back off algorithm is used to reduce collision probability when frames are retransmitted okay so this is the correct option and d is right so that's all for today's lecture i hope you understood both the questions thank you for watching the video stay tuned to the channel of easy engineering classes for more lectures on our preparation series like this video and share it with your friends if you understood the questions and mention in the comment section below how did you find the video thanks for watching stay tuned good luck